going after Wall Street, there are some Wall Street titans. Could you call out some of those that you feel should be held accountable? Oh, certainly. Jamie Dimon, Lloyd Blankenstein. I mean, I could give you a laundry list of the CEOs and executives who are in halls of power that are held without accountability. You know, when we talk about accountability, we're talking about justice. We're talking about the rule of law. And when people talk about the bailouts, consider this. If we do not hold accountable these captains of industry like uh, Lloyd Blankenstein or Jamie Dimon, if we don't hold them accountable for the disaster they created, they'll just do it again. That will be the new business model going forward, is that whenever they suffer a catastrophic loss, the public gets to eat it up, right? Whenever they make a huge profit, they get to keep it for themselves. What they're selling us is socialism for the rich and suffering for everybody else. And there are several instances where the law was broken. In the Bank of America countrywide financial fraud, I mean, the foreclosure fraud scandal, if I were to sign a check and I didn't have the money for it, I'd go to jail for that. If they fraudulently, uh, how do I say it? It's document fraud. They literally committed massive document fraud that cost people their homes and their livelihood. Now, if they can't be held accountable for that, they're just going to do it again. Same thing with Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs sold people what Senator Levin called a shitty deal, right? And he was 100% right. Imagine if I sold you a car, right? I'm a used car dealer. You come to my lot, you buy a car. I know the thing's a lemon. Right? So I sell you this lemon, and then I make a bet with this guy over here saying, like, hey, by the way, as soon as he drives off the lot, that car's going to explode. I bet you $100. That's exactly what they're doing. They basically painted a lemon red and told America it's an apple. Now that we've bitten into that bitter fruit and realized they lied to us, they don't want to be held accountable. They want their bonuses. They want to end the regulations. I mean, these guys are fighting tooth and nail to fight credit card regulations from the most recent Dodd-Frank bill, and I wish that bill was stronger. They wish it didn't exist. They literally want to go back to writing their own rules and being their own police because we know that they're not going to do that job. They're going to get fat on our suffering. So I say these guys need to be investigated if there's lawlessness, and we can prove there's lawlessness. So it's not even a question of if, that they should be prosecuted and held accountable under the rule of law. And I think that the politicians who are eager to suck up to them and toady to them and take their dirty campaign finance money, which basically was subsidized by our bailouts, those people should be held accountable too. Because if you let these wealthy captains of industry just buy our system, then it's not a democracy, is it? You know? So what, what, would, you tell, what would you tell Eric Holder and uh, Barack Obama about enforcing the law and holding these people accountable. You know, I'd like to make two different statements on that because okay. I think uh, Eric Holder and Barack Obama being two different men, they have two different jobs. Okay. So my first message would be to Eric Holder. You know, I had really great hopes for Eric Holder. I felt that there was a lot of criminality that took place under the Bush and Cheney administration, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. They clearly broke the law in regards to the Eighth Amendment uh, against the uh, uh, cruel and unusual punishment against the Fourth Amendment, illegal search and seizure. And when Eric Holder decided not to prosecute, he became malfeasant. When Eric Holder uh, decides not to prosecute Bank of America for the rampant foreclosure fraud that they've committed, he has become malfeasant. He refuses to do his job. And if he refuses to do his job, he should be replaced by somebody who's willing to do that job. So my first message to Eric Holder would be stop wasting our time with like legalized medical marijuana facilities and start breaking the guys who are robbing us of our homes and our jobs and our democracy. So if Eric Holder doesn't want to do his job, you know, it's like lead, follow, or get out of the way. Well, that's what I'm telling to Eric Holder. Either lead this country back to accountability under the rule of law or follow us at Occupy Wall Street while we do it. And if you're not willing to do either one of those, get out of the way. We'll find someone to replace you. If it's not now, it'll be the next election. If it's not the next election, it'll be the one after that. But accountability is coming. And if Eric Holder wants to run defense for war criminals and special interests, then we're going to end up having to find someone who's willing to do that job. Now, my other message would be for Barack Obama. And I also had high hopes for Barack Obama. I mean, I had ho high hopes for George W. Bush. I won't lie to you. When George W. Bush became president, I said to myself, you know, they have all these ideas and they have uh, both chambers of Congress and the presidency and the Supreme Court. I hope their ideas work. I really hope their ideas work. Show me how great these ideas are. I hope they work. And when they didn't work, when they proved to be just total failures at their ideas, I really hope that Barack Obama would take place and move forward into an honest discussion. My main, my, the main thing I'd like to say to Barack Obama is that we need you. Your country needs you. 
to defend the little guy, to stop listening to these advisors who are tied to Goldman Sachs. You know, these advisors who are, who are tied to the very industries that precipitated these disasters. Stop listening to those guys, man. Clean your cabinet out. I'd rather see Timothy Geithner lose his job than Barack Obama lose his. Because I still keep a little candle burning and hope that the people in power are looking out for us. And I really hope that the wind doesn't blow that candle out because we need that hope. But we also need to be it for ourselves. So I think Occupy Wall Street, and this is just me speaking for myself. I'm not speaking on behalf of this. is just me as someone who identifies as a progressive speaking. But I think I would really like to see accountability take place in one form or another. And I really hope it happens now before the next president comes in. And I actually get that question quite a lot. Where do you see this going? And I see it going as far as we can take it, if we're determined to really fight for our future. I think that our goals are economic justice and social justice, but I think those are overarching terms. So let's talk about accountability. I think that's a really good message. I think that we not only do need to be accountable ourselves, we need to demand accountability from our leaders. And our leaders are certainly not pressuring one another to be accountable. They tend to cover up for one another. So to me, if the smallest goal that we can achieve is beginning an honest debate in public places amongst our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our parents, our children. That's a very honorable goal. I think another goal that we can have is to demand accountability from our leaders. And it's not to say, vote for this party or vote for that party. To me, it's not about the next session of Congress or the next election. This is a movement that we need to carry going forward and we need to keep it going. In the same spirit of Martin Luther King Jr., in the same spirit of Ralph Waldo Emerson, this to me is about our future. Our future doesn't stop going under debate because one guy won an election or we passed one bill or another. This is a movement that is going forward and I am very thrilled to be a part of it and I want to keep it going forward as much as we can because it's that important that we discuss our future. And what happens, what, what, do you, what do you feel will be the prospects if the Occupy movements fail? If the Occupy movements fail, if people allow this to slowly disappear, your future will disappear along with it. If we do not continue to pressure our political leaders and our economic leaders, then they will continue to pressure us. How do you like the idea of a future with no retirement? Let's ask ourselves this question. How do you like the idea of a future where your education costs you so much that you're paying banks back until the day you die? How do you like the idea of your parents having no social security? How do you like the idea of moving in with your parents and having your kids move in with you and having a household where nine people live in one room? Because that's what happens if we let this go away. This is about our future. This is about today. And if we don't fight today, and if we don't fight tomorrow, then the future is lost. So to me, I don't really worry about how this ends. I worry about how to keep it going. And I'm absolutely thrilled that there are millions of people in this country, and even more millions worldwide, who are absolutely thrilled to take part in the formation of their future. Because if we don't, they're going to repeal the 20th century. They're going to repeal all the workers' rights and consumers' rights and voting rights that we have. This is about keeping what's ours and building the future. And if we don't, these corrupt political leaders, these corrupt financial leaders, they're going to steal everything and the shirt on your back. So stand tall, stand strong, let's plan for the future, let's have this discussion, but don't give up, man, because I don't want anybody to give up on our future. I want people to fight for our future.